hello lovely humans and welcome back to my channel. Last week I uh, I told you guys that we need to talk about wedding transportation and here it is. Today's the day we talk about all things wedding transportation related. Um, before we launch into that, just as a brief reminder, if you guys choose to, um, if you want to support this channel, one thing that you could do is uh, maybe consider letting some of those ads play from time to time because this is this is a huge and pivotal part of our business and um, it's a simple way that you can give back should you want to, if you like all the all the information I'm slinging your way on a weekly basis, uh, maybe just let some of those play. But on to the video. There are a whole slew of ways that you can get people from point A to point B. Most of the time when we're talking about wedding transportation, we're talking about two separate groups, okay? We're talking about you and your spouse-to-be and your bridal party, and then we're talking about your guests. We're gonna go ahead and break that into two different, uh, two different subjects groups. I'm so good at explaining things. Um, oh yeah, so without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Now when we're talking about transportation, we're talking about getting people from wherever they're starting to the ceremony and potentially from the ceremony to the reception if they're at two different locations. Afterwards, you also might want a getaway car or some sort of transportation to your after party if you're having one. So those are kind of the main places that we need people to be. Ceremony, reception, and potentially after party or home or hotel afterwards. First, let's talk about you and your partner and or your bridal party. Because it's a much smaller group and oftentimes you guys are at a more centralized location, it's easier to discuss and uh, move these bodies a little bit more seamlessly than it is with a large number of people at varying locations, such as your guests. So for you guys, one of the most traditional ways of uh, getting around is to rent a car or a party bus to drive you guys around. Now a couple things that I would love for you to keep in mind. When it comes to renting a vehicle for your wedding day, for either the two of you or your entire bridal party, please bear in mind that a lot of these companies have a minimum amount of hours that you will need to hire them for. So you might think, well all I need is a party bus to get us from the hotel to the ceremony. I, I think I only need them for 30 minutes you could be hiring them for two hours, even though you only need those 30 minutes. But that does mean that you could be paying a lot more than you anticipated. I can't really give you costs because there's a whole slew of different kind of vehicles that you can get. You can get a fancy vintage car. You can get like a, an SUV if you have a lot of people. You can get a party bus. You can get an even larger bus. There's way too many options for me to just go ahead and like give you numbers. Also, it could vary from place to place. But please bear in mind that if you are renting a vehicle specifically for you and your bridal party, it could be for several hours and not for one short trip. Another great option for transporting you and your bridal party would be Uber or Lyft or something of the sort. Because then basically you can order a car for like a uh, one journey, like one quick trip. So you're not paying for several hours like you would with a rental car or a party bus, but you're just paying for a one way trip. And this honestly is a great option. I do know that Uber has an option for like Uber XL. If you have a lot of people that you need to be transporting, it's wonderful because then you can pack a lot of bodies into one car. But it does mean that you'll need to do a little bit of thinking ahead and you'll have to take on a little bit of the logistics of all this to make sure it goes seamlessly. Uh, first of all, you never know what you're going to get with uh, with Uber. You don't know what kind of vehicle you're going to get unless you request one large enough for your entire party. So you might need to be prepared to split off into groups if you can't get one large enough. And this is of course talking about wherever you're getting ready and going to the ceremony and then potentially after the ceremony going to the reception. We'll talk about after the reception for you two in just a moment. Um, it is in your best interest to have somebody else set up and ready to call Uber, Lyft, whatever app you happen to be using, have someone else handle that uh, so you don't have to be worried about that because you may not have your phone on you or uh, you just have so many other things going on. So have someone else prepared to call the Uber and or Ubers for you. And then please bear in mind that if you're in a well-populated area on a Saturday, um, such as downtown LA, you could get stuck and you could be waiting for an Uber for quite a long time. We did have this happen at one event and ended up being just fine, so nobody panic, but uh, they couldn't fit everyone into one vehicle, so all the bridesmaids left, and the bride was back by herself uh, waiting on another Uber, and it took 45 minutes to get to her because it was downtown LA on a Saturday. So we were getting to the point where we were like, do we just like, do I go pick her up? Like, what do we do? Because it was taking so long. Bless her heart, that poor thing. I mean, she was in great spirits. Everything worked out fine. Um, we had them scheduled to come way earlier, so we weren't worried about it for this one. 
But again, if you are in a well-populated area, such as a large city, and you want to use Uber or Lyft, you might want to call them a little bit ahead of time, because we'd rather have the driver wait for a little bit than we would um, have you, you know, being stuck at your hotel instead of, you know, at your wedding. Now let's talk about you two grand exit, getting in the car and leaving. We've definitely used Ubers for this before. They're totally fine. You will need to have someone else obviously call the Uber or Lyft for you. You will also need to have somebody ready to go with your overnight bags because it's not a pre-planned vehicle where uh, your coordinator or family member or friend could stash your bags in the vehicle for you because um, the car is not there yet. You have to have someone ready to put all of that in there for you. That means if you're taking home any decor items, that means your overnight bag, that means all your cards and gifts. You will need to figure out what vehicles those are going into and they can go with family members or friends so you don't have to take all of it yourself, but you're in a lot like shorter of a time frame when you are calling a vehicle because it's not there for anyone to load up earlier. And um, do, do me a favor, please don't forget your overnight bag. Um, why do I say that? Because I, I forgot mine. <laughs> completely forgot it, uh, which was not, which was not, uh, not ideal. <laughs> so yes, Uber or Lyft is a great option. Just requires a little bit of thinking. You might want to call ahead, be prepared to split, um, and be wary if you're in a well-populated area where a bunch of people might be using it. And then the last option that I could think of would be either driving yourself or having a bridal party member drive for you. This is such an easy option and a lot of people opt for this. It doesn't make sense to call a car. It doesn't make sense to rent a car. Why not just hop into a vehicle that you already have? That's great. It works out just fine. It means that everyone can transport their, you know, their, their suitcases and or bags in the vehicle, leave them in the car. It's nice and reliable. You don't have to worry about it. The one thing that I do want to caution you with this particular option is should anyone choose to imbibe a little heavily and then not be able to drive afterwards, that's kind of a bummer. I mean, you could of course, again, call an Uber in that situation, but especially if you are driving your own car and you would like to uh, enjoy a couple glasses of wine or champagne or your signature cocktail, you probably won't want to be driving your car afterwards. And then a uh, pro tip on this one, okay? Make sure that your venue allows for cars to be left in these kinds of situations. Um, some venues will lock up, like literally lock a gate so you can't access your cars until a certain time the next day. Some venues will not allow for cars to be left at all, whether they're in the city or there's certain limitations that they have to abide by. You may not be able to leave vehicles there. So that could change how you structure all of this. If you or your bridal party plans on having a really good time, which, hey, Y'all deserved it. You've worked really hard to get to this day. Just make sure you have some sort of plan um, for the vehicle afterwards, because you guys obviously don't want to be driving. Okay, so now we've talked about you and your bridal party. Let's talk about your guests. Now, of course, most people would say, well, yeah, our guests are just going to drive themselves. And that is the most common option. We do not need to overcomplicate it if there isn't anything standing in our way of using that option. You don't need to dress it up or make it harder than it has to be. Because you guys already know planning a wedding is very stressful. You don't want to take on any added logistics of figuring out other people's transportation if you don't have to. Now there are quite a few circumstances where um, you just don't have a choice. So we're going to go ahead and talk through what those look like. Um, it could be because there isn't enough parking at the venue, which is quite common. It could be because a lot of people are flying in from out of town and may not have rental cars or someone to ride with. So obviously, we're going to need to figure out how to get them from wherever they're at to uh, to your actual wedding. Again, Uber, Lyft, calling a car, something like this is a great option. It's super easy. Uh, you don't have to manage that one. I do think that Uber has some sort of group code thing. I don't know. I haven't really looked into it, but I've heard I've heard about it before. That might be worth looking into if um, you can figure out how to get a code. So there's some sort of discount for a group rate. That's awesome. But again, do your best to not overly manage that situation if you don't absolutely have to. Just like with the situation with uh, the bride in LA who was stuck, do bear in mind that if you are in a populated area and a lot of your guests will be Ubering or lifting from place to place, some of them could be late because there isn't a car available. You also could run into the risk of not having enough Ubers or lifts in your area. So quite the opposite of being overly populated and the cars already being busy, you could run into there aren't any cars or there are not enough cars. A pro tip with this one. Uh, this also applies to the bridal party and you guys. Make sure your venue has cell phone service so people can call a car at the end of the night. We've definitely run into this a handful of times and it's complicated things because you can't get a car there. And that means you might have to use a landline to call a taxi service, which like, 
is that ideal and may or may not exist in that area at all. So just like pro tip, make sure they're, make sure they're serviced because y'all don't want to be stuck there spending the night at your wedding venue because that is, that's just not, that's not the way to end the evening. Ah, this next one is, um, <sighs> shuttles or party buses for your guests. Oftentimes this sounds like a fantastic option. Coming from the, the, the like the behind the scenes side of things, I like, I just, I, I, I really don't like working with shuttles. Okay, I know sometimes they're the only option that you have, I just don't prefer them. Because there are several limitations that you're gonna run into. I touched on this in last week's video, but let's say you got a 30 person shuttle bus and everyone's either coming to the same parking lot or staying at the same hotel and you have 100 guests. Well, in your mind, that sounds like, well, it's probably three, maybe four trips. But you do need to think through, okay, that's if you have the perfect amount of 30 people all waiting there at the same time. And then you have everyone getting onto the bus and everyone getting off the bus. So what's supposed to be a 10 minute drive turns into a 20 to 25 minute process just because people aren't necessarily zooming straight on and zooming straight off the bus. They're moving at a normal human pace. And then let's say the driver goes back and there's only 20 people. Does that driver wait for an additional 10 people to arrive and then they can leave with a full bus? Or does that driver take the 20 people and hope there's another 20 people ready? So if you take 100 guests and a 30 person bus, honestly, that's over an hour's worth of driving. So your first guests need to be ready to get onto the bus an hour before your ceremony starts. So you can see where this uh, gets really, really complicated. Also, who's managing the people getting on and getting off the bus? Obviously, our hope is that everyone would file on and file off and it would move pretty smoothly. But like for this example, I think about Disneyland and the trams and how long it takes uh, to wait in line for a tram to come, especially if it's a busy day or there's a lot of people and then get on the tram. It's a, admittedly a very short drive with those trams, but the waiting and then the getting on and the getting off is what takes the longest. The same applies for a shuttle bus for your wedding. In addition to that, they can be quite expensive and you may run into like a two hour minimum as well, which then at the end of the night, you will need to have that bus ready to go to drive everybody back. So you could be paying for two very large chunks of time and it just gets very complicated and it takes a long time. If it's your only option, I get it but do know that you need to prepare some of those logistics beforehand. And then the last option that is super great, especially if you are working with a hotel, is to use a hotel shuttle. If your venue is close enough, oftentimes a hotel will do it for a very low cost, if not free, as a part of like your room blocks or just something they offer to guests in general. So it's definitely worth asking. Now these are much smaller vehicles, usually 10 to 15 passenger vans, perhaps a bus, but again, we run into those same issues like we would with a party bus or a shuttle bus, um, is how long it would take to get even 50 guests in a 15 passenger vans back and forth. That takes a very long time. But if your hotel offers it, especially if it's cheap and or free, it could be a great idea to, uh, to take advantage of that if your guests don't have vehicles or you're worried that not everyone will be able to get an Uber or a Lyft. You can, of course, do a combination of these things. Some of your guests may drive themselves. Some of your guests may take Ubers or Lyfts just so they don't have to worry about driving. You may get a shuttle bus for a certain group of people that are staying at a certain hotel. So you're not worried about all 100 of your guests, you're just worried about the 20 to 25 that are staying there. And you could also take advantage of hotel shuttle services if they offer them. There's a lot of logistics to think through when it comes to transportation. My biggest suggestion to you though, is like don't overcomplicate this if you don't absolutely have to, okay? So if you can ride over to the ceremony in a friend's car, great. If all of your guests are figuring out their own transportation, that's super normal. That is the most normal situation that we see when it comes to guest transportation. If you do come across limitations, whether with out of town guests or lack of parking spaces, obviously you'll need to get a little creative, but only take these options if you have to. Wedding planning is hard enough. Figuring out transportation for 75 people, 80 people, 120 people is craziness. So do what you can to simplify and uh, make sure it's not your responsibility to figure out how everybody's getting around. You got enough to do. So wow, that was a lot of information, you guys. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys aren't subscribed, I don't know what you're doing. Like get on down there, hit that subscribe button. We are so close to 75 thousand subscribers just just hit it ring that bell hang out with me each and every week because because i like you and this is fun for me <laughs> okay and until next week bye guys mm -hmm.